All right, guys. I don't normally do these kinds of things, but I've noticed that there aren't a lot of good videos that you can find out there on how to change the rear tire, or at least remove it, on the Kawasaki Voyager. So I thought I would do one. Um, maybe I'll post it, maybe I won't. So uh, I'm not, I don't do this very often. I don't have any fancy equipment. Um, but I think there might be a need out there. Uh, I've got a couple heaters going in the garage. I started out at 33 degrees. I'm climbing near 50 as we speak. Uh, a little electric heater and the tools that I think I'm going to need today. I got a 10 millimeter socket to get the saddlebags off. 17 millimeter socket to get the shock nuts off a 22 and a 27 millimeter socket for the rear axle a couple half inch drive ratchets i really recommend getting a long breaker bar for at least one of those i keep forgetting to get one after i need it every time i change my rear tire i don't like to use my torque wrench if i have to but I may end up doing that. Um, screwdriver, four millimeter Allen wrench to take one of the cover uh, bolts off and a pair of needle nose pliers for the castle nut uh, on the axle. Probably also gonna need uh, a rubber mallet and potentially some brass punches. but we'll get those out here after a while. So I'm gonna to try to do this in real time. I'm not gonna to try to do it in a hurry, but um, I'm meeting a friend for lunch about 11.30. I'm not gonna be real fancy with this. I'm just gonna walk through the steps um, and we'll see how this goes and see if it's helpful. keeping all my hardware that I take off. Sometimes I'll actually, depending on what I'm doing, get some uh, Ziploc bags and mark them so I know where I got all the parts from, but uh, no need for that today. Some other things that I'm going to need today. Um, the floor mat is uh, handy just to keep yourself off the cold concrete. Needs clean and uh, safe. Scissor jack. And today I'm going to use that roller dolly. I've never used that for this. Um, I usually use that floor jack sitting back there. Um, but uh, I think we'll try that this time uh, just a little easier to manage doesn't stick out as far um, and I don't think I'll need to tie it down so hey we'll find out right uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it up uh, on the jack
I'm going to use that jack a little later for the hold up the rear tire. joint just to make sure she doesn't roll around on me now that we've got that done we're going to take a couple screws off of this hardware this cover plate just to give it enough flexibility to get to that upper nut. Kind of a Phillips head screwdriver and a four millimeter out. Yeah. Put those in my tray so I don't lose track of them. That gives you just enough flexibility to get up to get that top nut off uh, without too much challenge. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and get the brake calipers off. I believe those are 10 or maybe a 12 millimeter now that I think about it. And always have ready some zip ties to uh, help keep things out of your way as you're working on them. So I'm going to go ahead and get these off. I'm going to get a little extension. So that uh, brake caliper can come off, and it is a 12 millimeter. So add that to the list of tools you'll need, and just slide that off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this jack underneath the rear tire. bike. I just want to get a little pressure there so that when I drop the shocks it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and get 
get my 17 millimeter. With a nice extension on just to keep my knuckling away from all of this. and a flat washer on here so make sure you keep hold of both. And then we'll need a 17 millimeter combo wrench. Two. Get the one up here. Now the only risk of doing it this way is don't necessarily, or you can't get a torque wrench to properly torque this top nut down. Um, but I torque the bottom one and I, I feel confident that I can get this to at least the minimum of torque. Now again, this has got a lock washer and a flat washer, so don't want to drop those. And lose track of them. spacers on the axle a little bit later, but to keep everything in a line when you're trying to put the wheel back on. So I take some zip ties. I'll see if I can get a close up after this here in a minute. So you can see that mount that holds the brake caliper comes down and actually has uh, a, like a mortise joint in it that slides in and out on the swing arm. So I just take two zip ties and I zip tie that to the swing arm so when I drop the axle um, that can't go anywhere. All right, so now we're going to need to get the axle out. So that swing arm should be free. I've got both shocks off. Have the brake off. I'm going to have to get that uh, cotter pin out of the castle nut. 
and then I'll loosen that uh, castle nut on the axle shaft and pull that out. Now you'll see how far down that axle is in the, uh, you know, I won't be able to pull it out because all of this will be in the way on the other side. So that's why we pulled the shocks off. I'll show you that here in a minute. I'm just gonna raise that wheel up now that the shocks are gone. Now the axle's high enough that I can A, access it easier, and B, I'll be able to slide it out the other side. And now, the fun part. Because I don't remember what I torqued that at, and I've got the torque specs from the manual. Um, but, it is a challenge with two short wrenches to get off. Uh, I believe this is a 27. Yep, and I believe the other side is a 22. So we're going to get back here. And we're going to attempt to break this free. You don't have to use a brass punch, um, but they're handy to have. Um, you just want to be careful. That when you're knocking that shaft out, you don't booger up any of those threads. Um, so. There shouldn't be much pressure on this. All right, once I kind of see that move a little bit, it looks like I'm through. Now you will notice something. That's the axle tensioner which puts tension on the belt. I did not adjust that. Um, some people will tell you, I don't know if you can see, but there's these little hash marks on the swing arm and a hash mark, uh, one hash mark on the tensioner so that you can measure that and put that to tension the belt evenly. Um, I have found so far that I can manipulate the wheel in there um, and get the axle in without having to do that with a 
brass punch and a hammer when I put it back in. But you can break that lock nut off, that flange nut, uh, back that off. Just be really careful. I would even recommend you grab a scribe wherever it is before you start. Um, just scratch a little mark in there in relation to your mark on the uh, tensioner. So now, all of that there, and we'll come around and pull that axle the rest of the way out. So you can let that swing arm fall. You're going to have a spacer on both sides. Make sure you keep the left on the left and the right on the right. I'm just going to put that with the shock that I already have on this side. Go ahead and get the belt off. Don't just lay that on the floor. Uh, try to pick a clean space for it or a, uh, at least a block of wood or something like that in your garage. So now my wheel should be completely free. And again, I locked that brake caliper mount on with that zip tie. So it's, it stays in the right place. Uh, probably come over here and get that spacer out from this side. It looks different than the other one. Uh, so you can't really get them mixed up, um, but always good to keep them out of the dirt. You know, I've got dogs, so you don't want to get dog hair all over them. You have to clean them up and got to put some re-grease on them anyway. Get the tools out of the way. All right, so now we're 30 minutes and 37 31 minutes into this video so this is the only tricky part gonna have to get a little dirty um, and it's as challenging getting it back on but I can't go up any higher on my jack because I put it on the roller stand. So I'm going to actually pull the jack out. I'm going to go ahead and pull the gear off. Just to make a little more room. And voila. A little careful on that brake rotor. You want to capture all these dampeners that sit on the flights on your hub. Those interlock in your drive wheel or in your drive pulley. Just make sure you grab all of those so you don't lose them before you take them to have your new tires mounted. So I would just reverse that process when I put it back on, I'm just going to leave that drive belt hanging there and literally reverse the, the process. Uh, not that anybody asked me, but I use the Dunlop American Elite. Um, it's the favorite tire that I've ever ridden on a big bike like this. I get about 15,000 miles um, without any challenges at all. 
as you can see I'm just getting on the wear bar there um, a lot of guys will ride 20,000 miles on them without thinking twice um, I put 15,000 miles on it a year um, so I find in February or March it's just easier to go ahead and put new tires on so I don't have to do this in the spring during an interrupt good riding season and that's it we're 35 minutes into this video from uh, start to finish uh, the only thing I did prior to getting started was kind of lay out the tools I knew I was going to need uh, so even without uh, a lot of mechanical experience most most guys could do this if they have the right tools you know the jacks the tools aren't inexpensive but uh, take this to a dealer uh, to have done and outside of the cost of the tire you know two and a two hundred fifty dollars you're gonna pay um, probably close to that again you know it's gonna be a four or five hundred dollar rear tire change over the cost of a um, over the cost of a lifespan of a motorcycle that's you pay for your tools pretty quickly and more importantly you don't give up your bike um, for long periods of time um, you know I get mine at cycle gear not an advertisement um, but if I buy my tires for there they do the mountain balance for I don't think it's free anymore but it might be 25 bucks um, so um, not for nothing um, the American Elites, and I know a lot of guys are fans of the Commander 2s and the Commander 3s, the Michelin um, big bike tires. Uh, they don't actually make the size recommended. I think these are 180 65s. Um, so it's just a few millimeters shorter and a few millimeters wider. Um, but uh, I, I ride pretty aggressive and I've never uh, noticed any challenge from that and these things stick like glue uh, they ride great in the rain uh, I just couldn't be been, couldn't be happier with this tire but hey you're tired of listening to me you wanted to see how to remove the rear wheel from your Voyager um, that's how I remove the rear wheel from my Voyager uh, even a fat old guy can do it